Hi. Well, what we're going to look at is chapter nine, and we should be able to get all of the three sections done in this one video. So what we're going to do now is we're going to expand it from the chapter four with two equations and two unknowns. And what, we're, what, what, blah, what we'll now have would be three equations and three unknowns. And, you know, it's it's really not hard. It, you know, it's, it is a little tedious and there's so many places to make little mistakes. You just have to be really careful and meticulous and be neat so that you can go back if something went wrong and see where you had maybe possibly made a mistake. We're going to use the elimination method. We're not going to use matrices. If you've learned with matrices, that's fine. Go ahead and use the matrices but we'll just use the elimination method, which is what most of the 1400 teachers will use. Um, there's, there's a couple that will use matrices, but for the most part, it's elimination method. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna solve a system of three linear equations with three unknowns. So write all equations in standard form. That would be step one. And here we've got, um, as an example, as a basic template, AX plus BY plus CZ equals D. All right. And um, turn my phone on vibrate only. Number two would be to clear any decimals or fractions, which you shouldn't have in this section. But in case you do, clear those. Declare the decimals, multiply by 10, 100, 1000, or multiply by a number for a fraction. Declare the fraction, multiply by a number that all of the denominators would go into. Okay, step three is to choose a variable that you want to eliminate. There really is no right or wrong here. You can choose to eliminate the X's, like in this first example, the Y or the Z's. Now, there are some choices that might make the whole process easier, but again, there's really no right or wrong whether or not you want, which one you want to eliminate. But by looking carefully, you can might be able to choose one that might be a little easier. All right, now number four, step four, next use a different pair of equations and eliminate the same variable that you did in step three. So what we'll do is um, we'll spend some time on this step number four. I'm going through that carefully so that you understand, you know, three and four might be the toughest steps. And um, now on step five, you should now have two equations with two of the same variables. And then step five, you're back right back into chapter four. You've got two equations with two unknowns. So we're going to take these and eliminate a variable so that we can use the chapter four stuff and then find the other missing two. So let's see, st step six, substitute the solution from um, once you eliminate it and you get down to one variable, you just kind of start working backwards and finding the other two variables. All righty. Well, let's go ahead and go through this. Step one is done. They're all in the standard form. Uh, step two is done here. There's no fractions or decimals. Now we get to choose our variable. So I'm going to move this up a little bit. And we're going to choose our variable, which is step three. So what you want to do is you want to choose um, one of the variables that is close to being equal and opposite in all three equations. Sometimes it's easier than in others. Now, the x's are close, but none of them are opposite. They're all positive. But you know, it's, could do that. You could eliminate, multiply this one by a negative two and then add it. Multiply this one by a negative one and add it with this one, it's fine. You could eliminate the y's. Um, here, I'm gonna number the equations as what we normally do so that it's easier to talk about the individuals. So we could eliminate the y's. We could add equations one and three together right now and the y's would drop out. Um, and then we'd have to use equation two. That's a part of step four using the other variable. So when you're doing steps three and four, you have to use all three of these. Um, eventually they have to be used. 
So then we could um, eliminate the Y's. We could add one and three. Y's are gone automatically. Don't have to multiply by anything. Then we could take equation one and multiply it by a two and then add it with equation two. Eliminates the Y's. Or we could eliminate the Z's. We could add equations one and two directly. That would eliminate the Z's. And then we could take and use like one and three. So we use one and two and one and three. Let's go ahead and eliminate the, mm, I guess we could eliminate the Y's. Sure, let's just eliminate the Y's. We could have easily picked the Z's and eliminated the Z's. But um, I think on the next one, I'm gonna eliminate the Z. So we'll start by eliminating the Y's. So I'm gonna take equation one, I'm gonna copy it over. In this step, we have to use all three of them eventually. And equation three. Be careful that you don't copy them over wrong. You know, like I say, there's so many places to make little mistakes. So I'm going to take equation one and I'm going to add it with equation three. And the reason I'm doing that is I chose to eliminate the Y's. And here, if I take equation one and I add directly equation three, because the Y's are equal and opposite, they will drop out. So I'm going to add these equations together and get 3x. Um, these drop out, minus z. Okay. One and a negative two is a negative one equals three. We're halfway through our steps three and four. So I eliminated the y's using one and three. Now I have not used two yet. So you have to use two because all three have to appear in this, this um, step here. So number two, I'm just gonna go ahead and copy it over. I know I have to use it. Now, now you have a choice. You can either use one again or three again. We want to eliminate the Y's. You have to eliminate the same variable. If I eliminated the Y's here using one and three, I have to, eliminate the y's here using two and, okay, this is a negative two. So which one would be easier? I want them to be equal and opposite. I think I'm gonna use this first one because it's positive. So I'm gonna use equation one. I'm just gonna copy it. The more steps you skip, the more often um, you'll make mistakes. I want to eliminate the y's. But you're thinking, wow, if I could eliminate the Z's, but you have to eliminate, these have to eliminate the same variable. Eliminated the Y's, you have to eliminate the Y's. To do that, I'm gonna have to multiply this equation by the number two, because that'll give me a positive two Y. So I'm gonna keep this one the same, the second equation. And now this equation, number one, is going to be 2x plus 2y plus 2z, multiplying across, plus 8. Don't forget to take it times that last number. So now when I add these two together, I get 3x, the y's drop out because I had the y's drop out, the y's have to drop out here, plus one z, two and a negative one is one, equals nine. So let's recap. I chose to eliminate the y's. Some may have eliminated the z's. You'll get the same answer. I eliminated the y's, so I used equation one and three so that when I added them together, the Y's dropped out. And then I had to use two, and then I get to pick which of the other ones I want to use. No right or wrong, 
I chose to use equation one, it's got lots of positives, just because this equation two had a negative two y, and all I, I just needed to make this a positive two y. So I used, I chose to use equation one to eliminate the y's with equation two, multiplied by a two so that the y's dropped out. So we are now to chapter four in our next equation. I've got 3x minus z equals three. That came from the first two. The next set, 3x plus z equals nine. So you can see now we're back to chapter four by eliminating one of the variables of the original equations. And it's really the same method as chapter four, just so you're dealing with a few extra variables. Well, it's pretty obvious that we're going to try to eliminate the z's here. We don't have to multiply by anything. They're already equal and opposite. Six x equals, these drop out, 12. Divide by two, oh, excuse me, I said the answer. Divide by six, x equals two. Okay. So now we start working our way back to the top. If x is two, I go to the sets above and use one of these. I, I could use this one or this one and put the two in and see what the Z is. All right, so I'm gonna put the two into this nine equation here. So three, well, yeah, I'll put it up above. I'm gonna use this one. So we work our way back up. Straighten it out a little bit. Three, X is now a two plus Z equals nine. 6 plus z equals 9, subtract 6, z equals 3. So we have the x and the z. We now need the y, so we work back up. And so now we go back to our originals, because our originals have the x, the y, and the z. And so let's see, let's use number 1. Equation number 1 x plus y plus z. And again, it would not matter which one you use to find the z, or excuse me, to find the y. You could have used two or three. I just like one, the numbers are small. So I have two plus y plus z equals four. Move it up a little bit so that you can see, sorry. X is two, Y, Z is three, and then we have a four. Five plus Y equals four. Subtract five, subtract five, almost ran out of room, but I think we've got it. Y is a negative one. Now, I, I'm not really sure how Pearson wants you to write this. It may have X equals, and then you put a two. Y equals negative one, or Z equals three. Or sometimes they have you write it as a triple order pair here, two in alphabetical order. But there's our X, there's our Y, and there's our Z. Two, negative one, three. So we've just added a, a, an extra step. We just added this extra step here at the beginning, this right in here where we choose a variable to eliminate. And if you choose to eliminate the Y's, you choose to eliminate the Y's. All righty. Okay, hey, let's practice that. Uh, let's see, I think I'm gonna use this one next. Okay, I leave you a lot, there's lots of room on these notes. So, whoop. Let me try to straighten it out. There we go. All right, let's look at it. <clears throat> They're in the standard form. That's step one. Um, they've got this over a little bit. Move this up. 
Uh, let's see. Well, hmm. it looks like the Ys would be easier to eliminate again, not the Zs. Because, um, yeah, you could eliminate the Xs. You could eliminate, you could multiply this one by four to give you an eight and a negative eight. And then you could multiply the top one by two to give you eight and a negative eight. So, um, you know, you could eliminate the X's, but let's go ahead and eliminate the Y's because here, negative one and one, I don't have to multiply anything. I mean, the Y's will automatically drop out. So I'm gonna number my equations. And let's look at two and three. Equation two, sure, it's, yeah, you can see it. Negative eight X minus Y plus Z equals a negative five. <clears throat> and let's use three. Those are two of the easier ones. Two X plus Y plus two Z equals five. All right, when we add these together, we'll get negative six X, the Y's drop out, plus three Z equals zero. Yeah, zero is a number, it can be equal to zero. All right, so we use two and three, so we have to use the one and we have to eliminate the Y's. We have to use the one we haven't used yet. We have to eliminate the Y's. So I think I'll go ahead and use this bottom equation. And the reason I'm gonna use the bottom number, equation three rather than two is because it's a positive. I've got a negative here, so I so I want them to be equal and opposite. Well, it's already opposite if I use three. So all right, so on this one, it looks like you know we eliminated the y's. We have to eliminate the y's. So I'm gonna multiply, oh, I'm gonna multiply this by two, because that'll give me a positive two y. I think I can get this in. So we've got 4x minus 2y minus 3z equals 5. 4x plus 2y plus 4z equals 10. Again, don't forget to take the 2 times the 5. 8x. The y's disappear, it's what we wanted, plus z equals 15. So now I have my two equations um, here, these two that I got from um, using two and three, eliminating the y's, one and three, eliminating the y's. So now we're to chapter four. And 8x plus z equals 15. You could eliminate the x's if you wanted to. You could multiply, you could make them both a negative 24 and a positive 24. Multiply this one by four and multiply this one by three. That would give you a negative 24 and a positive 24. Or if you don't want to multiply both equations, you could eliminate the z's by multiplying this bottom equation by a minus three, which is what we're going to do. So the top equation will stay the same. Minus 6x plus 3z equals zero. And the bottom equation will become a minus 24 x plus, oh, or excuse me, minus 3z 
minus 3z equals a minus 45. Now it looks like we're going to end up with a fraction, but that's that's okay. It won't be too bad. All right, so when we add these two together, double check my work, the z's drop out, so we have a minus 30x equals a minus 45. When you add those together, divide by a negative 30 and reduce the fraction. Let's see, four, positive 45 over 30, because negative over a negative is a positive. 15 goes into there, three halves, three halves. X is three halves. So you work your way back up. So we start here, we're gonna go back up. We can put the X in right here. We could put three halves right here and solve it for Z. We could put the three halves right here, which is probably what I'm going to do. Or we could put the three halves right here. You're going to end up with the same answer. Well, let's use the top equation rather than this equation. Like I say, it won't matter. So a minus 6x plus 3z equals 0. Our x is 3 halves. Um, if you wanted to, to take negative 6 times 3, oh, sorry about that. Make sure you can see it. Negative 6 times 3 halves is a negative 9. Um, you could take a negative 6 times 1.5, which is what this is on a calculator. But um, this reduces. So you end up with a negative 9. If you're not real good with fractions, I guess you could rely on your calculator to multiply those together. So now we solve it for Z. Add nine, two-step equation here, and then divide by three. Z is three. So we have our X, we have the Z. We go clear back up because we're working our way back up now. So we put our three halves, we put our three halves into here, and now we'll put the X and the Z into one of the originals. How about number three? I like equation number three because there's, there aren't any negatives. So I'm, I chose to use three, you could use one or two, but we'll have, I'm gonna use equation three at the top. Let me copy it down and then I'll make sure you can see it. All right, so I'm gonna use equation three. I'm gonna put three halves in. The y we don't have, I'm gonna, yeah, it's a positive three. Two times three. So I just put in my z and my x. These cancel, one, one, so you end up with three. using some basic algebra here, y plus nine. You, you can tell, I didn't give you very many of these to do in your homework. They take time. Subtract nine, y equals a negative four. So we now have our x, our y, and our z. And if you wanted to write them as an ordered pair, you'd put them in alphabetical order. All right, awesome. Let's look at another one. And then we'll look at a couple story problems and then we'll be done with chapter nine. Okay, now this one is a little bit different. Um, they want you to solve the system. The thing is, is looking at this system, I have, uh, I'm missing the Y in the second equation. I'm missing the X in the third equation. So this one can be done a little differently. You could take equation, let me number them again, 
as you get into more upper level math, there's more ways to solve a problem, which sometimes makes it more difficult because you have to decide what method am I going to use? You could take one and two and eliminate the um, Z's. And then you could take one and three and eliminate the Z's. You could do that. Uh, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a little different method and that I'm gonna use a substitution method on this one, just a little bit different. So I'm gonna take this equation and I'm gonna solve it for X. So I've got X minus Z equals a negative 70. Add Z to both sides. X equals Z minus 70. So I just put the Z on the other, oh, got the zero. There we go, minus 70. And that is, that kind of, that's a poor subtraction, looks like negative. Then I'm going to take this equation and solve it for y. And then you'll see here in a second, just to give you another method in case you want this. 2y, I'm gonna add z to both sides Well, here. I'll try not to skip too much. Add z, 2y equals z, divide by two, y equals z over two, half of z. And I'm going to now use equation one. I'm gonna substitute this in for the x and this in for the y. What we have then, we've used all three. We've used equation two, we've used equation three, and we're gonna substitute it into equation one. So substitution does have a part. It can have a part, it's not always just elimination. And um, here, putting this in for the X, I'm gonna go ahead and rewrite it. I'll put this in right here and this in right here. So Z minus, 70 is the X plus the Y is Z over two plus Z equals 180. So you can use substitution in order to get it into one variable, or you could use substitution to get these other ones into two variables. You don't always have to use the elimination. Um, this one has a two in the denominator. You could eliminate it right now, multiply by two, 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 two. You could add these Z's together and bring the 70 over and then multiply by two. Um, it's up to you. Let's go ahead and multiply. I just go ahead and multiply by two. So we don't have to look at that fraction. Two Z minus 140 plus so I multiplied this by two, this by two, this they cancel. So plus Z plus two Z equals 360. And now you solve it for Z. Once you have the Z, it'll be pretty easy to find the X and the Y. Let's finish it. So we have two Z, three Z, five Zs. Add 140 to both sides. 5z, you can still see this. 5z equals 500. So divide by five, z is 100. So what's the Y? It's 100 divided by two or 50. 
What's the x? The x is 100 minus 70 or 30. So you have your x, your y, and your z using substitution. So it, it has a place in there if, if you choose. You didn't have to do that. You could have used one and two, added them together. The z's would have dropped out. Then you could have used one and three. The z's would have dropped out. Then you've got your two equations and you could have gone from there. All righty, let's look at a couple story problems and then we'll be done. So this is actually nine, one, two, and three. Now let's look at a simple one here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have three unknowns. So we have to have three equations. If you have two unknowns, you only need two equations. But we have the sum of three numbers is 57. There's our sentence, there's an equation. The first number minus the second plus the third is one, our second equation. The first minus the third is three more than the second. So we're gonna find the numbers. I'm gonna use X, Y, and Z to represent my numbers. So we have the sum of three numbers is 57. X plus Y plus Z is 57. There's my first sentence. The first number, we'll call it X, minus the second. So I have the first number, which is X minus the second plus the third is one. Hopefully that wasn't too bad reading it from left to right. We didn't have any less thans or subtracted froms to have to switch the order. So the first number minus the second plus the third is one. Now let's look at the third equation. The first, so we take the first, they mean the first number, minus the third, Z is our third number, is three more than the second. So this is our first number our second number, and our third number. So the first minus the third is three more than the second. Find the numbers. Okay, now this one actually does require step one. I'm, I'm gonna move the, the Y over on that third equation. So I'm gonna keep these two the same. And I'm going to subtract the Y and move it over so that I've got the X's lined up, the Y's lined up, and the Z's lined up. So equation number one is going to stay the same. And equation number two is going to stay the same. And the third equation. becomes this, I put, the, I put the minus Y, I put the minus Y after the X in that order. Even though it's, I'm gonna put this down, that so it's a little even. Okay, so now we have to decide what to eliminate. Let's eliminate the Z's. We've been eliminating the Y's. Let's go ahead and eliminate the Z's this time. So using, equations, let's say, let's use equation one and three. So equation one, and let's use three because you have a plus one and a minus one. So I'm gonna use, I better label that equation three. You could have used two, you know, it's up to you. Ooh, so now when I add these together, I get two X. Oh, the Y's drop out, the Z's drop out, and I get equals 
60. So X is 30. Okay. Well, that might make things easier um, because now we know what one of the variables are. Well, let's go ahead and let's go to, let's use, we're eliminating the Z's. We have to use equation two right now. And I've got X minus Y plus Z equals one. And I want to eliminate the Z's. That's what I originally wanted to do. So I'm going to use equation three so that the Z's are eliminated. Add these together. Now you could put a 30 in here. We know that that's a 30. I'll just go ahead and keep it as an X. Minus two Y, the Z's drop out, equals four. So now we, um, looking at this, now I can put in my 30 and find the Y. Sixty minus two y, and some people may have realized that at this step you can divide everything by two if you want to to have smaller numbers. But some people don't recognize that idea, so we'll just keep it. But you could have some of you may have recognized that minus sixty equals a minus fifty six. Running out of room here. So then we have divide by a negative two. And it looks like y is equal to um, 28, positive 28. So because I know what the x was, you know, when you go ahead and you use your other equation, because in this step, you have to use both, all three equations. So we used one and three and two and three. Um, you could put the X right here. You can substitute that in. So now we have Y. And we have the X. So let's go back up to our original. Uh, let's go to equation two. I, I think I'll use equation two. So we've got X minus y plus z equals one, 30 minus 28 plus z equals one, two plus z equals one, subtract two, z is a negative one. Now, if you were to put these three into all three equations, the left would equal the right in order to check it. Awesome. Alrighty, let's look at another type of story problem. Last problem for the video. And we'll go through it. All right, Kea frequently downloads music, TV shows and movies. In January, she downloaded five songs, 10 shows, and three movies for a total of $40. We have a sentence there. In February, she spent a total of $135 for 25 songs, 25 shows, and 12 movies. Another sentence, another equation. In March, she spent a total of $56 for 15 songs, eight shows, and five movies. Assuming the prices stay constant, um, how much does each cost? All righty. Well, let's go ahead and set up our variables. What I'm going to do is um, they want to know the cost of, of each of these three. So we're going to let X equal the cost of each um, music download, each song, music, Y is going to represent the cost of each TV show. And Z is going to be equal to the cost of each movie. 
All righty, so let's get started with the first sentence that we have January. So we're gonna have an equation for January, February, and March. In January, she downloaded five songs. So if we wanted the cost of those, because we're doing a total cost, because they do give us the total of all of them is equal to 40. We'll take uh, five times X plus 10 shows, 10 times Y plus three movies, three times Z for a total of $40. The number times the price for each one plus the number times the price for each one plus the number that we have, three of them, times the price for each one is gonna equal the total price. There's February. Let's do March. March is, the total was $135, but we had 25 songs times the price for each one, 25 shows times the price for each one, plus 12 movies, times the price for each one is 135. Okay. Now we have March, $56 total for 15 songs, 15 times the price of each, uh, eight shows times the price of each, five movies times the price of each, and the total price was 56 for the month of March. We now have our three equations and our three unknowns. And what you're gonna to have to do is decide what you want to eliminate. Do we want to eliminate the X's, the Y's or the Z's? Well, um, let's see. If you wanted to eliminate the Z's, you could multiply this by a minus four, this equation, and then you'd have a negative 12 and positive 12. Then you could have used one and three, like multiply this by a negative five and a positive three to give you negative 15 and a positive 15. Okay. But we have not eliminated the X's yet. So I think I'm gonna eliminate the X's. I'm gonna use equation one, and three, because I'll get those to be negative 15 and positive 15, and then negative 25 and a positive 25. So I'll be using, I'm gonna eliminate the X's, but there's really no right or wrong. So looking at number one, make sure we have enough room. I'm gonna use number one. and three. And I am going to eliminate the X's and then I'll use um, one and two and eliminate the X's. So I'll multiply this by a minus three because I wanted it to be a negative 15 in order to eliminate the X's. I'll just put it underneath here. So one becomes negative 15 X minus 30 Y minus nine Z negative 120, multiplying that through. Equation three is gonna stay 15 X plus eight Y plus five Z equals 56. So that when I add these together, um, the uh, X's will drop out. Negative 22Y minus 4Z equals negative 64. Okay. Now I've used one and three. Oh, sorry about that. Couldn't really see it. So let's see, again, I just added these, these dropped out since you couldn't see it while I was doing the math here, minus 22, minus four, so many places to make a mistake. You have to be pretty meticulous. Since I used one and three, I have, I have to use two 
and I have to eliminate the x's. So I'm going to write down 2. And I'm going to go ahead and use number 1. So in order to eliminate the x's, I'm going to take 1 and multiply it by a negative 5. That'll make it a negative 25. So I'm going to multiply this by a negative 5. So the 2 is going to stay. And number 1 will be a negative 25x, negative 50y, negative 50. 15z and a negative 200. So now that now these will drop out, which is what we wanted, we'll have a negative 25y, negative 3z, and a negative 65. So now we're to chapter four. Two equations, two unknowns. Let's go ahead and write it down here. Um, minus 22y minus 4z minus 64. Make sure I don't transpose them incorrectly. Minus 25y minus 3z minus 65. Yep, so far so good. I'm going to eliminate the z's. I'm gonna make them equal to one of them a positive 12 and the other one a negative 12. Let's go ahead and we're gonna make this one, let's multiply by a negative four and a positive three. So then that will be a negative 12 and that'll be a positive 12. Um, let's see, we have a negative, doing that, multiplying it, we have a negative 66y minus 12z and three times 64 is a negative 192. I did the math earlier, there. Now we'll multiply by a negative four. Negative times a negative is a positive. Plus 12z, positive, um, let's see, 260. Okay, so now the Z's are equal and opposite. Let's go ahead. Here we'll have 24. Why? No, 34. Sorry. 34y, z's drop out, equals 68, positive 68, good. Divide by 34, y is 2. So now that you have y, one of the variables, you work your way back up. I would put the Y here or put the Y here. It doesn't matter. Let's put it into this one right here. So we have a negative 25Y minus 3Z equals a negative 65. Negative 25 times two. Uh, negative 50. Oh, no good. I should have caught it before I went too far. Add 50. Get the Z by itself. Divide by a negative 3. It's a 3. Z is a positive 5. And now you'll go back up to one of the originals. 
and put in the Y and the Z. I think looking at this, I'll probably use equation one. Numbers are a little bit small. I'm gonna copy it here, 5X. I know you can't see it, but I'll move it after I copy it. 40. So I'm using equation one, um, 5X plus 10 times two, three times five, ah. five X plus 20 plus 15 equals 40. It looks like five X plus 35. I'm just gonna have to come over here. equals 40, subtract, why did, okay, I, for some reason, I had, oh, that's right, subtract 35, 5x five equals five, x equals one. So I'm gonna double check, make sure I didn't make any mistakes there. And yeah. So you've got one, X is one. Your first, um, the, uh, the uh, a dollar, the cost of each song. Y is the cost of each TV show going back up to the top of our variables. Five is the cost of our movies. All righty. Now, one other thing. If, if you're ever doing these and for some reason all the variables drop out, if you had 3x minus y plus 2z equals 10 and you had a minus 3x, plus y minus 2z equals 11. If you ever had this where they all drop out and you get zero equals 21, there's no solution. The three lines do not intersect, all right? So this could be a no solution. You can also end up with an infinite number of solutions if you end up with like zero equals zero. All right, so I just, you know, we didn't do any examples like that, but it can happen. Okay, well, that pretty much does it for chapter nine. And if you have any questions or any problems or in, in um, putting, um, inputting the numbers into Pearson itself, that you have questions on that, let me know. Otherwise, bye-bye.